Welcome everyone to Self Principle. Now this week I wanted to address a question that I get asked a lot, which is about kidney stones and coffee. As you know, there's several podcasts and videos I've done around the benefits of coffee, but a lot of people with kidney disease ask, well, what about kidney stones? Let's look at the evidence and see if we can't answer that question. So with that, Let's dive into a little bit of background so you know what kidney stones are all about. First is it's important to understand kidney stones are actually quite prevalent. About 15% or roughly one in seven people out there have kidney stones. Some have recurrent kidney stones and some have so many kidney stones that they just can't get rid of them and can have serious complications, including kidney damage and even in rare cases, dialysis. Now, common symptoms of kidney stones are things like flank pain or pain right in the back going on. Some people notice blood in the urine. Some people have vague symptoms, things like they have a little bit of nausea, a little bit of urgency when they the urinate, they have an infection with the stone going on, they may have pain when they urinate. So urine stones can have very large symptoms and often and sometimes even smaller symptoms that you might miss. Now in terms of stone types, there's about five main types that you want to understand. The most common one is calcium oxalate. That's about 70 to 80 percent of the people who get stones. It's usually calcium oxalate. Then there's calcium phosphate, which is 15%. Now, calcium phosphate is very unique when you compare it to calcium oxalate because it requires a very different pH. Calcium oxalate likes an acidic environment, but calcium phosphate actually likes an alkaline environment. The third type of stone is uric acid. That's about 8% of the stones that are out there. And it comes in people who have high intakes of purines. Purines are usually found in like organ meats, shellfish. And what happens when you intake high purines, they convert to monosodium urate. And that monosodium urate converts to uric acid. And that's the item that's causing the stones. The fourth type is struvite. And these are generally linked with upper urinary tract infections going on. And oftentimes there's common bacteria that produce urease. And that bacteria is a species like Proteus, Klebsiella pneumonia, Cornibacterium, Urea plasma, Urolyticum. And the thing about struvite stones are they're oftentimes associated with what's called triple phosphate. So they have calcium, magnesium, and ammonium. And lastly, there's cysteine, and cysteine are pretty rare stones, so not a whole lot to worry about them, but they can happen, and there's same sort of treatment options that we've discussed in the past. Now, the evidence around caffeine and stones is conflicting. There's positive research, and there's negative research. Let's hit the positive research. So there's a study in 2021, which is a systematic review of 13 studies, and what they said was that moderate coffee consumption doesn't raise your risk of having kidney stones. In another study with Ferraro and colleagues in 2014, what they looked at was the health professionals follow-up study, the nurses health study one and two, and they found that caffeine was independently linked with a lower risk of kidney stones. And then another study in 2013 showed that greater than or equal to one serving per day of caffeinated coffee versus less than one serving per week had a 26% lower risk of kidney stone. All right, so that's the positive research. So far, so good. But what about some negative research? Well, Massey and colleagues did a study. They looked at 39 patients with calcium oxalate stones. And what they did was they basically looked at the urine test two hours before and two hours after caffeine consumption. And what they said was that caffeine mildly increased the risk of calcium oxalate stone formation. Now, remember, these were people who were already having calcium oxalate stone. So meaning you were seeing more of the calcium and oxalate going into the urine. Then there's another study with Sun and colleagues in that was an NHANES survey from 2007 to 2014. And what they said was there was a linear relationship between caffeine intake and your risk of recurrent kidney stones. So now you have positive studies, you have negative studies. And the question is, what's true? Well, in order to really get an answer of what's going on is you have to understand the problem with all these studies. They have recall bias. There can be confounders going on. And if you really wanted to understand, you would have to do a randomized control study, which is both difficult, takes enormous amount of time, and it's extremely expensive. And therefore, it's very hard to do randomized control studies. So the question is, 
do we have something that can give us a better answer? The answer is yes. So there's a study published in the American Journal of Kidney Disease in October 2021 that looks at this exact question of coffee and caffeine consumption and uses a method called a Mendelian randomization study. So what is this Mendelian randomization method? Basically, the idea is by using certain genes, you can basically say if that marker is strongly associated with what you're testing, then you may be able to create a causal inference. So in other words, in this study, they looked at 14 single nucleotide polymorphisms. And each one of these polymorphisms is associated with coffee consumption. Now, they used a very large database. It was 375,833 individuals of European ancestry. It's called the UK Biobank Study. They also used the FinGen study, which has 176,613 individuals in it. The idea was by using these single nucleotide polymorphisms that are linked to coffee consumption, they could make a causal inference going on. And the concept here is that because these single nucleotide polymorphisms are random by itself, you're getting that randomization effect that you would do in a randomized control study. That's a lot of complicated stuff, but it's good to understand a little bit about Mendelian randomization strategy and how it can help. But remember, in order for this to work, it has three key assumptions. Those assumptions are first, that whatever variable you're looking for, that genetic marker, the genetic SNP, has to be robustly associated with the exposure, in this case, coffee drinking. That's why using something like the UK Biobank study is so important. Assumption number two is it can't be associated with something else going on. And the third assumption is that the generic variable that affects the risk of outcome, it has to affect the outcome through the risk factor. That's a complicated way of saying that basically if you're saying that their stone formation is what you're looking for, then the stone formation has to occur through caffeine consumption. And that caffeine consumption is linked to the specific nucleotide polymorphism. All right, enough about the science, way too complex. You don't have to know too much of the details, but you can always look back at it as a reference. So what did they find in this particular study? Well, what they found was that by increasing coffee from one cup a day to one and a half cups a day, you reduced kidney stone risk by 40% from one cup to one and a half cup, that's all it took. And looking at it slightly differently, 80 milligram increase in caffeine, which is equivalent to about one additional cup of caffeinated coffee, had a 19% lower risk of kidney stone formation. So in other words, very small increases in coffee were linked to lower stone risk. And what's the mechanism? So if you want to know why coffee is linked to lower stone risk, it's because of a few things. First, caffeine has diuretic properties. And by making urine flow, you prevent debris from sticking together and forming stones. So the key here is, is if you drink coffee and you're making sure that you're staying hydrated, you can lower your stone formation. Of course, if you're dehydrated, then that's a different story. Number two is, is caffeine actually reduces calcium oxalate crystals from sticking to the cells lining the tubules of the kidney. And as a result of that, by preventing those crystals from sticking, they can't stick there and form stones. They just flow right out the urine. Another thing is, is that coffee is rich in citric acid. And citric acid is a very powerful stone preventer. And then lastly, when it comes to another factor, which is also present in decaf coffee, is trigonaline. Trigonaline is basically an alkaloid found in coffee, and it has similar protective benefits against kidney stones as caffeine does. So as a result, you can look at both caffeinated coffee and decaffeinated coffee as lowering the risk of kidney stones. Now remember, if you think about this study and you say, well, what is the bottom line? What can I take home? It's that this Mendelian randomized study, which if the assumptions are correct, it gives a causal inference. And that causal inference is, is that increased consumption of coffee, both caffeinated or decaffeinated, is linked to lower stone risk formation. 
Thanks so much for watching. And as always, please, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, give us a comment. We would really appreciate it. And as always, make sure that you follow self principle in sleeping more, moving more, practicing gratitude and kindness, and eating a whole foods plant-based diet for optimal health. Thanks so much.